a lot of this is working and better than I thought it would. This episode of Some Gadget Guy is brought to you by viewers like you. All the folks who share content on social media and the incredible generosity of my patrons, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. More on those awesome geeks later in the video. I'm in full sleep deprived testing mode, so let's just get right to it. We're using a Surface laptop with the X Elite chip. This is the middle spec performance SKU from Qualcomm, and I opted for the 64 gigabytes of RAM model with a one terabyte SSD. From my first impressions video, I had a number of commenters confirm for me that the pen support in the Surface laptop has been removed. This Surface pen will just be tied to my Duo and Duo 2, which are getting a little less use these days. Thank you for those comments that helped abbreviate some of my testing time. Otherwise, I'm pretty close to replacing my massive workstation here. I'm not there yet, but I'm getting close. All the basic stuff is working a trick. Networking is great but I need to find a better main hub. There are just too few ports on a surface that drives me crazy. I need a lot more USB IO, another laptop hub. I, I hooked up a 2.5 gigabit ethernet adapter and this seems to communicate great with my home network and with my NAS. Spoiler alert, it's just gonna be a running theme in this video that anything using standard USB drivers is gonna be in good shape. Like storage devices, we're getting decently quick transfer speeds. The little uh, SD card memory slot. It's really slow to ramp up, but we can peak around 140 megabytes per second transfer rates. Not far behind my dedicated memory card reader for my PC, that peaks around 160. I'll still use it here in the office. It is a little bit faster, but I don't think I'll need it on the go. My little Kingston SSD here hit 700 megabyte per second read speeds on the USB 4 port, about what I'd expect from a mid-priced portable drive. Video input and output is working great. Directly connected through the USB-C, we've already got triple monitor support, which is really exciting for ARM users. To my knowledge, there haven't been any single die ARM SOCs that I know of on phones or tablets or previous laptops that could support more than one external display. I need someone to correct me in the comments. I think the only MacBooks that support that are the larger die or dual die M series chips. The standard M1, M2, I don't think they can do triple display. Please correct where necessary. Directly through the USB-C or using an adapter, we get HDMI support. That's working great too. Flip side, for creators, I hooked up my Aja UTAP. This is the main input I use for streaming, and there is no proprietary driver for this. But the Windows camera app could not see it. So I installed OBS Studio, which currently does not have an ARM native build that I could find, and emulating the x86 version of OBS, it saw the UTAP just fine. I could totally stream off this. Audio devices are working great. If you don't need a driver, plugging in DAX, audio output is awesome. Now, the built-in headphone jack on the Surface is surprisingly good. The amp is pretty solid, but if you already have the hardware, you can already go audiophile over USB. The bummer is when we need a proprietary driver. I have never loved the way Focusrite requires a driver and a control app in one and then buries that behind an account login. You can't just go download it, at least not that I can find on their site. So I installed all that software here, but that one was obviously not gonna work. I'm not using my Focusrite as much these days, and I could definitely switch to a simpler audio interface for the few times I need to swing out my broadcast mic. I'm bummed by this, but I seriously doubt Focusrite is gonna move fast, which is super frustrating. And if you're heavily invested in Focusrite gear, I would absolutely pause before buying any ARM PC. But that's a Focusrite issue not an ARM PC issue. We've been dabbling with ARM PCs for years now. And with more of this hardware coming to market, it's really on those brands to get off their butts and start supporting. Now, to expand a bit on my first video, just my first look video on DaVinci Resolve, it's not just a lack of GPU rendering. Resolve is in beta, and boy howdy, it's in beta. It's super rough around the edges, and I'm still having stability issues moving between panels. I'm gonna try some editing on a trip that I've got coming up, but man, it, it really does need some polish. I have a lot of confidence in how DaVinci has handled problems in the past that will get good support moving forward, especially especially with more of these machines making it to market and consumers picking them up. Other programs I'm using, I, I like GIMP, 
Handbrake and Affinity, and they all have arm support. I still like to kind of play around with Audacity, and that's been performing really well, even though it doesn't have an arm version. We're just talking about emulated performance. And I'm really happy to see that, like, even when I'm over Wi Fi, pulling work files from my NAS has been great for editing. Now, my older versions of Sony and Magic software like SoundForge have been flaky, but these days I'm doing more of my audio processing in Resolve. I even finish my weekly podcast in Resolve. Of course, Office apps from Microsoft are working great, even though the Microsoft Store app is hot garbage. It's always been bad on x86 machines. It's pretty broken on ARM. Even worse when we're using these expensive computers from Microsoft. Getting techie, getting nerdy. One of the critical issues right now, how locked up this BIOS is. First, the EUFI is comically incomplete. There are so many other things we would want to do in our system settings, but setting up a portable Linux distro and telling the computer to boot off of that external media, I can't get that to work. Now, Linux support inside Windows with WSL is awesome, and there's so much good Linux software ready to go supporting ARM. At launch, I did not expect that I'd be able to install Linux over the Windows install on the Surface, but I can't even boot into a portable distro? That's super lame. We definitely need to be putting more pressure on manufacturers, Qualcomm and Microsoft, to open up that kind of support. I own this laptop. I want to do what I want to do with it. And a bit of a longer rambling bit here, I want to wrap this up with some thoughts on gaming. I know the hardcore gaming channels are kind of writing this off and rightfully pointing out that AMD Strix Point coming out in about a week and Intel Lunar Lake in a couple months. But I always find it interesting we only allow for future product potential when it's a popular idea for that audience. If you like AMD, then the future of AMD will be worth waiting for, and the current performance and future potential of X Elite could never be worth it. Now, here's my prediction. I wholly expect that we'll see better integrated GPUs on AMD and Intel, but that does not unseat what X Elite is right now. In Qualcomm's fourth major PC chip. We've got CPU performance hanging with the most powerful current mobile parts from Intel and AMD, and the GPU is outperforming Vega 8 and Iris graphics. I don't know how better to position this product for consumers than to point you back to our preview videos where me and TK went down to San Diego. Qualcomm engineers point blank telling the media this will not be a gaming laptop part, but you can play games on it. Qualcomm made that distinction and spoon fed it to reviewers as directly as they could. Now, I've had pretty nice experiences on AMD 5000 series and Intel 12th and 13th gen mini PCs. Those play games without a dedicated GPU. So this infomercial hand waving, how X Elite, it just doesn't make any sense. It's play acting, confirming the bias of an audience for a YouTube channel. Another thing I've been running into in comments, that AMD 8000 parts are basically the same or better, or if you just change some system settings, you can even beat X Elite. I've heard folks say they can match the performance. They can match the performance per watt of X Elite with an AMD chip. And if that's true, please do it. Just do it, show us. Here's the test I need to see. I want someone to fire up DaVinci Resolve and edit a 4K30 video timeline. Get about a minute of footage, 100 megabit per second bitrate files, preferably from a mirrorless camera. Give me five or six transitions in a one minute project and render that down to 50 megabit per second MP4. Good enough for YouTube streaming. Now on the best performance option in Windows settings, I can plug the Surface Laptop into this. This is a last generation OnePlus warp charger. This little brick supports up to 45 watt power delivery. It's a phone charger. The Surface, while working in DaVinci Resolve, does not give me a warning that this charger is too slow. The battery charges above the power draw while I edit and render, which means the total system, total, the entire computer power consumption is under 40 watts. The fans are quieter than my ceiling mounted air conditioning vents. I have struggled so hard to replicate this kind of performance that I have now, the performance per watt in Windows land, where I could really trust I could edit out in the field 
on a laptop battery. Back in the day, I loved using this system, but it came with a 165 watt charger that I couldn't reliably use on airplanes. I used to truck this gaming laptop around and edit sitting on the floor of trade shows as all of us nerds fought for power outlets after a keynote. <laughs> this thing is so dusty. Years later, we're not doing that much better in Windows land. It's real neat that Intel and AMD are taking power into consideration for laptops now. But after three generational updates of MacBooks, come on, we obviously need more competition in this space to shake things up. And Microsoft going with Qualcomm for the very first Copilot Plus machines, it seems to be that last nudge, getting Intel and AMD really promoting improved power use. I think AMD Strix Point is gonna be great. I think Lunar Lake is gonna be a solid step in the right direction. I have no doubt that writing in a Word document should vastly improve on little efficiency cores. That's pretty low power. But when the performance cores fire up, Will AMD battery life plunge in Resolve or Affinity or GIMP? Will I still need to run for an outlet? Can I charge it on an airplane while I use it? Will the fans still crank up? Gaming is only one application of a high performance PC. And that data is absolutely crucial for our understanding of these products and how to make the right recommendations. But let's not ignore all the other things we might want to do on a high performance chip. Aside from a Mac, and I'm not going to buy a Mac, I don't really have a lot of options for a portable machine that matches the CPU performance of a 13th gen Core i9, but at a total system power draw under just the CPU power of the Core i9. I feel like a lot of the gamers right now are kind of cherry picking what they think's important. Hey YouTube, is your bro some automobile guy? We're uh, testing out the new Toyota. Now, Toyota said the new Prius is built for fuel efficiency and daily commuting. And Toyota engineers even told us that it wouldn't be good at like towing heavy things. So the first thing we did with it, dog, we, we, we hooked it up to a boat. We tried to tow a boat and it's nowhere near as good as a Ford F-150 at towing. So I just don't see how Toyota can justify the price on a Prius when it can't even tow a boat, yo. <laughs> I mean, gamers complaining about gaming performance on a machine that's not billed as a gaming laptop, that's kind of what you sound like. PC gamers, I used to work for Newegg. I totally get it. I love building ridiculously big rigs. You are not getting Lunar Lake and Strix Point this year because PCs have always been the best and PC gamers have been trash talking ARM. You're getting those new chips because x86 machines have been getting destroyed by ARM chips in practical daily use and performance per watt. Being an AMD or an Intel fan doesn't make AMD or Intel products better. The only thing that gets these companies moving is when we acknowledge and embrace good competition. And over the next year, we'll probably see a play by MediaTek partnering up with NVIDIA. AMD might start up an ARM product line. Apple is going to bring M4 to the MacBook. That's what's going to make our computers better. Competition, only competition. It took Intel losing Apple three MacBooks ago to finally get Lunar Lake going. Anywho, Plenty more to get through, lots more testing to do, and I'm already kind of loving this. While I send angry emails to companies like Focusrite to get off their arses. And if there are any specific questions or things that you'd like to see tested, I'm answering those questions first on my Patreon. Now, I greatly appreciate all the folks who try to support these YouTube channels, subscribing, sharing content on social media. But if you have the means, I hope you'll check out the community on patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Early access tiers. This video was an early access video, 4K videos, the private discord, and it's just a great group of geeks to hang out with. I'll be hanging out in those comments more than I'm hanging out here on YouTube. Once again, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. A huge thank you to their generosity and for helping me to keep the lights on here in the gadget lab. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy basically everywhere but these days i'm spending a bit more times on the patreons and on the mastodons a lot less so on the facebook's and the instagram's and definitely not on the twitter's and i will catch you all on the next video